worship team. Amen. It is an honor to be before you today. We want to thank God for this opportunity on the absence of our bishop. Amen. Who is on the road today and gave me the orders to bring forth the word. Also want to thank God for all of our elders being in the house and being in position. You know, there's something about positioning. The anointing is on the position. So we thank God for our elders being in the house as well as all of our ministers and our deacons. And why don't we give God a praise for Minister Courtney Yelder and the youth team that came forth so powerfully on today, releasing a sound of joy, a sound of breakthrough through their ministry. And I look, just looked over there and I saw, oh, I, I remember what this side over here used to be filled with young people. And I declare and decree that those days are returning in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, turn back and just point your hands. We the one assigned that area to be the youth area, but we say, Lord, have your way in those seats. Uh, just fill it up one by one. Bring them in, bring them in, oh God. From the east, the west, the north, and the south, we give you praise for the tsunami, the tsunami of the move of your spirit that's about to hit the belly of our young people. And they shall prophesy like Jocelyn, who already prophesied. We speak that over the entire youth ministry, and it shall be done. And the Lord say, I'm getting ready to send them in. I'm getting ready to send them in. I'll send in the youth musicians. I'll send in the youth psalmists. I'll send in the youth dance team. I'll send in the youth preachers. I'll send in the youth Sunday school teachers. I'm sending them in. I'm raising them up for this season and for this purpose. There shall be no lack in the house of God. There shall be overflow and abundant supply. Oh God, we thank you for the young people that are standing and we pray over all of our college students, over DJ, oh God, over every last one of them, Father. Let the word hit their belly now. The Lord said, I'm bringing down the wall. I'm bringing down the wall of hindrance. I, there shall be no more delay concerning what I have called my people to do. There shall be no more delay. This is the month of the sounding of the shofar. This is the month. Release the sound. Because when the sound is released, there is an awakening. We've got to wake up and release and realize. A sound. I want you to begin to lift up your voices. Call in the young people. Call them in. Lift up your voice. We call them in. We call in the college students. We call in the boy. We call in the girl. We call them in right now. We call them in from the east. We call them in from the west. We call them in from the north. We call them in from the south. I'm going to ask Jocelyn to come for a minute and also Chloe, I want you two to come up and also when, when Darius or when Trail when Darius I want you three to just stand right here Amen I want you to release a 20 second prayer asking for your generation to come go exactly in that order you all can turn around and look at the the congregation hallelujah go ahead um, lord god please um bless our generation lord god help us to understand that you um want the best for us lord god lord god let more youth come to the church lord god lord god please just let us communicate with our um 
elders, Lord God, more, Lord God. And amen. Amen. Lord God, thank you for the youth that we have now in the church already, Lord God. I pray that more youth will start coming to church and that they will realize that you are the way, the right way to turn. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Lord Jesus, we sit down and pray to you, Lord God, to send a mass way to youth minds, Lord God, to come fiercely with you, Lord God, and to elevate their spiritual levels, Lord God. Please, Lord God, make sure that you are able to cover us as we are youth, Lord God, and the word is named Jesus, Lord God. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, young people. Somebody say they're the leaders of tomorrow. I say that's a lie. They're the leaders of the day. I want you to get your Bibles open. Amen. We're going to be out shortly. But I do feel like I have a little nugget for you. I want you to just open up the book of Genesis chapter 1. Amen. And while you're opening the Bible... I want to share some things about you, about the season that we're standing on the verge of entering into. Uh, we're in, getting ready to go over into autumn. And autumn, this is such a, a, a pregnant time of the year. This is considered the holiest time of the year. We're entering into the time of the fall feast. We have Rosh Hashanah coming up. And Rosh Hashanah is considered the a time of the blowing of the trumpet and it's the and in it, uh, well Elul with the month that we're in now and we'll be leaving out of that month and on the last day we'll go into Rosh Hashanah which will be next week but Elul is the blowing of the every day in the month of Elul we blow the trumpet the sound of the shofar to indicate an awakening is taking place there's a change getting ready to take place. And Rosh Hashanah is the head of the year, and it's a new year. We're getting ready to leave the year 5779, and we're going to the year uh, 5780. And eight is the number of new beginnings as well. So as we're getting ready to go into a new season, a new season on tomorrow, I want you to get ready for change. God said he's ushering in a chain. He's going to do a new thing in your life. Don't consider what has happened in the past to determine where God wants to take you right now. But he's going to do a new thing in your life. And he's going to explain some things to you. You've gone through some situation and you're wondering, Lord, why did I have to walk through this? Why did I have to go through this season? Well, the Lord said he works everything out for your good. And he is going to reveal to you why you had to go through that season of suffering. Because we all going to have to suffer. If you follow Jesus, you're going to have to suffer. I don't care what you, the people tell you on the TV or what you hear on the radio or how much we hear that everything is all uh, well and uh, all, all, all uh, sandy and dandy all the time. But there's going to be some times that you're going to have to cry. There's going to be some times that you're going to have to go through. Because unless you suffer, you cannot be strengthened. And you said, the Lord said, if you want to reign with me, you got to suffer with me a little while. So you're going to have to go through some things. But I want you to know that you're in good hands. I want you to know that you're in good hands, that the Lord can handle whatever you give to him and stop trying to carry it on your own. Stop trying to put it on your shoulders and carry it. The Lord said, give it to him because his burden is light. We're also in a time of preservation. You know, it's during the winter time is that the, the animals, some animals go get ready to go into hibernation. It's for their protection. God said, he has covered this season. You are, you, we are preserved from some things. Some things tried to take you out. And even some things going to come that's going to try to take you out emotionally. It's going to make you think that you're going crazy. But I want you to know that you're not going to go crazy. You're not going to cave in. You're not going to throw in the towel. But you're going to be preserved. How are you going to be preserved? You're going to be preserved by the power of the Holy Ghost. 
You see, the Holy Ghost is what's never, it never was a denomination. It's all about the power of God. And when you tap into the presence of God, you can be preserved from any storm, from any trial. You can be preserved and not only preserved, God said, I'm protecting. I'm protecting you. You know, during this time of the year, we have a lot of people getting ill. The Lord said he is protecting you from attacks upon your health. The Lord said begin to 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 go through a season of retrospect. See what the enemy is trying to force you and coerce you into doing to your own self. The Lord said there are, there are many of you that have been going through sicknesses and pain, not because, oh my God, of disease, but it's because of some things and some limitations and some open doors that you brought about on yourself. But the Lord said he's going to remove those things. He's going to begin to open up your eyes. And you're going to begin to see how the enemy has been trying to attack your health. And you're going to, you're going to, maybe some of you have a habit of eating too much pork. Or you have a habit of worrying, which is another thing that will cause disease to enter, which is stress on your body. But the Lord said, I'm going to reveal it to you and show you how the enemy is trying to attack you. And I'm going to shut it down. The Lord said he's releasing comfort during this time. Comfort, comfort, comfort. Many people are going through a lot of things. We're even praying for our deacon Billy Drake, who has lost his sister. There's many people who have lost some things. Come on, you've lost some. Maybe it wasn't a loved one, but maybe uh, you had your car repossessed. Come on, somebody. Maybe you lost uh, a relationship. But the Lord said you couldn't lose anything unless it was by his permission. Come on, sometimes it's better to lose some things. Come on, because God is trying to get something new to you. The longer the longer you hold on to the old thing, God said, I cannot get what's new to you and better. So you shall be comforted, though. Though you have lost it and though it was the Lord's will for you to lose it, you shall be comforted in the midst of the loss. The Lord said, even as during the autumn time, the day hours are just as, e the, 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 it's even. The day hours and the night hours are even that we will spend in a given 24-hour day. The Lord said, I'm bringing balance. I'm bringing balance to you. Some of you, your life has been out of balance. You have been out of balance, but the Lord said, I am bringing balance to you. Because as you operate in the level, in the dimension of balance, is how I can increase my anointing on your life. So, that's the season you're getting ready to go into. And now we want to get quickly to the word of God. There's a word of God that needs to come forth on today. As this is the month of the sounding of the shofar. And I want to tell you that each one of us have been called to be a shofar. There is a mouthpiece that all of you, you have the anointing of a mouthpiece. A shofar is something that releases a sound. You have the anointing to be a mouthpiece for God. There is an anointing on you and it's coming in even now even stronger that you shall be able to release the word of God into your situations, over your family, over your health, and you shall speak to your money, and your money will grow, and you shall speak to your family, and your family shall be restored, and you shall speak over your household, and there shall be peace in your family, because I have called you to be a mouthpiece during this season. Somebody say, look at, your, look at your neighbor and say, make a sound. Okay, let's go into the word. Genesis. Genesis chapter 1. Amen. Genesis chapter 1. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version on today. If you have your Bible, say, I got it. I got my Bible. I got my word. 
Genesis chapter 1, and it says at verse 3, well, I'm going to go ahead and read 1 and 2 as well. In the beginning, we can ready to go to the beginning, another beginning, I'm beginning of the year. In the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of the Lord was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, then God did what? Let there be light and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. In uh, verse 9 for time. And then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. Verse 12, in the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. In verse 16 for time. Then God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day. The lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Verse 18. And to rule over the day and over the night. And to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. Verse 21, so God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the waters abounded according to their kind. In every winged bird according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. My Lord. And verse 3 again, then God said, hmm, let there be light, and there was light. And I want you to go, and Eric, you don't have this, but it's okay. It's a rhema. The Lord just told me to read it again. Psalm 98 and 4. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. I just want to talk to you a little bit about it's time to release your sound. It's time to release your sound. Amen. When people think about the beginning of the earth, they will most likely answer, and some people say, that it was the Big Bang Theory. What's behind it? But we all know, according to the word of God, it was God who created the heaven and the earth. Now, there's one thing they did get right about that, that there was a sound. There was a bang. There was a sound release in the earth. And that sound was a result of God speaking. Speaking is a derivative of sound. Somebody say sound. Now, I want to give you a definition of what sound is. Sound is vibrations that travel through the air or another medium and can be heard when they reach a person's or an animal's ear. Light travels faster than sound. Sound is produced by continuous and regular vibrations as opposed to noise. 
music, speech, and sound effects when recorded, used to accompany a film or video production or broadcast. It's all about a sound. There, there is quite a bit of evidence that sound waves were crucial in creating the universe. My Lord Jesus. The logic is that sound waves are a force that travels through particles. And you had every single particle possible. So it was a reaction. It was a reaction with the entire universe. It had the power to create the universe in that one instant. So this is what we mean in Genesis 1 and 3 that says, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. It simply shows the power of God speaking. And in John chapter 1, verse 1 through 3, it states, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God word was God he was with God in the beginning through him all things were made without him nothing was made that has been made he was the word a spoken form of sound even when the angels were interacting with God like in Job 38 4 through 7 where were you when I laid the earth foundation. Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know who scratched a measuring line across it on what were its footings set, or who laid its cornerstone while the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. It was all about the sound. God saw that sound was so important that he formed sound and it was the first thing that God released into the earth. Because when God said, he said, let there be light. So as God has already placed the sound in a high significance, so just as sound is important to God, he wants you to know that your sound is important to your breakthrough. It's going to take a sound. God placed his sound in each one of us before we were even placed in our mother's womb. You see, who you are right now you are looking at, you are looking at a house of dirt. Come on now. But before God placed me in my house of dirt, oh my God, he had already formed me and spoke over my life before he released me into my mother's belly. Come on, somebody say, I am who I am. So what you see, this body right here, is not the real me. The real me is on the inside. It's my spirit. It's what God blew into me. And man became a living soul. That's why we as man, we cannot live by bread alone. Come on, we cannot live by drink alone. We must have the word of God. It is the word of God that will fill us with the spirit. You're going to need the Holy Spirit. You're going to need to be in fellowship with your maker in order for you to produce anything. Come on now. Come on. You must get producing anointing from the producer himself. You cannot rely Come on now, on what mama said. You cannot rely on what your daddy said. You cannot rely on the books you read. But you have got to be 
in tune with the one who has given you the power and the anointing to produce. My God. Now, whenever God wanted something, he just spoke to it. We see here in the book of Genesis that God would speak. He spoke and it was so. And when he spoke to, when God speaks to something, he will speak to whatever is holding what he wants to produce. That's why when something is holding back, what God has called you and purposed you to bring forth into birth, he said you got to speak to it because everything God made has ears. God made everything according to a sound. Everything received the sound. You got to know that the earth was formed through sound and vibration. How do I know what you going to produce? It's about the sound that's coming out of your mouth. I can tell you where you're going to be in the next three months because what you are speaking out of your mouth. There's no hope coming out of your mouth. There's no faith coming out of your mouth. All you talking about, oh, everybody against me, such and such. Well, where is that getting you? There is a sound that's coming up out of a realm. It's coming up out of the mouth of our young people. There is a new sound that's getting ready to be produced in this house. And everything that has been held back, everything that has been hindered, oh, we're going to speak to it. And we're going to command it to loose our stuff, to loose our dream, to loose our destiny. I said we're going to speak to it. That's why it's been so difficult for some of you all. That's why it has been so difficult. That's why you've been experiencing battles in unemployment on your job. You've been experiencing battles in your finances. You've been experiencing battles in your health. You've been experiencing battles in your relationship because there is a sound that needs to be released over it. My God, you see, where you are and the devil is fighting you on your level of potential. You are responding by the level of where you are, but he's fighting you knowing who you can be. You got to realize what's in you, baby. And when you begin to acknowledge what's in you, that's when you begin to use it as a weapon. You have got to realize what is in you. You have got to know. And you have got to begin to listen to the sound that is about to come out of this house. There is a vision that's coming forth and it's going to get you where you need to be. And what will allow you to tap into it is going to be your praise. I command and I declare and I decree that the enemy will have to take his hands off the praise in this house. the enemy going to have to take his hands off the praise that is in this house. Praise is a weapon. Lift your hands up. All of you are receiving a shofar that's sitting on the inside of you right now. It's entering into you right now. It is in your spirit right now. 
and there is a sound that needs to come out of your belly. Oh, there are three. Oh, God. There are three levels of praise. And the first level of praise has to do with a sacrifice. Only if you will be willing to give God a praise. And if you will be willing, come on now, God inhabits the praises of his people. Everybody that belongs to God, open up your mouth. I said, open up your mouth. Y'all sit down for a minute. Got to get this. Listen, when God created the earth, there were three heavens. The first heaven, which is where we're living right now here on earth. There's the second heaven, and there is a the third heaven. Whenever we pray, he has to travel from the first heaven and it has to penetrate the second heaven. See, the second heaven is where those spiritual warfare take place. You remember when Daniel was praying? And the word of God said, when the angel came to him, it said, I came on the first day. I heard your prayers the first day, but I was hindered from coming to you. I had warfare in the second heaven. Because what I was trying to get to you from the third heaven was being locked up and tied up in the second heaven. But Daniel, he had warfare, but he didn't allow the warfare to move him. See, some of you all, when the devil come against you with not just one situation, but a situation after one situation after the next, because he know that he can lock you down. And that you will not continue to pursue what God already showed you. He showed you that house. He showed you the promotion on your job. He showed you your child being saved. He showed you your breakthrough. And he said, the reason I showed it to you, talking about sin in Revelation, if you can see it, you can have it. I said, if you can see it, you can have it. But the enemy held it up. But Daniel kept praying. And then on the 21st day, that was breakthrough. Because he needed to get down from the third dimension of heaven down and go through the second heaven. But what empowered him to continue fighting was the prayers of Daniel. And so Daniel received the breakthrough on the 21st day. Just like there are three levels, three heavens, there are also three levels of praise. And we are really good with the first level, which is a sacrifice. We'll give God a sacrifice. Worship team come up, praise team come up, and they said, just lift your hand, just open up your mouth and give God some praise. We, come on, put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, demonstrate, demonstrate, demonstrate. We'll put our hands together. We'll give God some praise. We'll offer the sacrifice. No matter how we feel it, you know, we, we fought and we curse each other out on the way to church. But when we get here and we get into the sanctuary, we're going to lift up our hands and we're going to give God some praise. Come on now. I've been going through warfare on the, all week, the week before. But when I get in the house of the Lord, I will give him a sacrifice of praise. But in the second level, the first letter, level is the law of sacrifice. The second level is the law of prayer. We pay the price as we enter into the second level. We were talking about, we were talking about Daniel. And so the Lord begins to speak, speak to our heart in the areas of, of our desires, our vision, our goals, our emotions. And we begin to tap into the power of prayer because prayer is also a level of praise. And the third level is what I want to talk to you about. Ah, my God, my God. 
I want to talk to you about how important it is to release your sound. You see, what you got trying to get to you, you trying to wait until you see it before you give God the praise. But God said, first there must be a sound to come out of your mouth. First the sound needs to come forth, and then you will see what you're believing God for. He said, first comes the sound, and then the manifestation will follow. First comes the sound, and then manifestation. Come on, say it out of your mouth. Ah, hallelujah. And I want to demonstrate it to you. I want to show you in the word of God that he honors this principle. He honors this principle. Ah, my God, my God. Elijah said, when Elijah said, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. After the sound, then came the rain. He did not see the rain first. He heard the sound of rain. But he heard, because he heard the sound, he was able to stay in the posture of prayer. And he began to cry out to God for what he had already seen. Someone said again, first comes the sound, and then comes manifestation. So Elijah, we look at Elijah as our example. We look at Jehoshaphat. There was a sound of praise that went out. The strategy, the word of God, the man, the, the Lord sent the prophet. The prophet said, I'm going to tell you what the strategy is. The strategy is going to be praise. Ah. So, as Jehoshaphat, as they begin, he began to tell the people, if we believe in the prophet, we will prosper. So the people, he began to tell the people, we've got to release a praise. We've got to release a sound. So they began to praise God. And when they praised God was when they threw the enemy into confusion. That's why your enemy is, oh, oh my God, he's having a field day with you. That's why you don't have the victory because you are not throwing your enemy in confusion. The only way you're going to be able to throw your enemy why, how do I know he's in confusion? He cannot locate me. The enemy cannot locate me because he is in confusion. What put him in confusion? It was in the praise of the people. And I'm telling you on today, there needs to be a sound that's coming out of your mouth because it is time to throw your enemy in confusion. The walls of Jericho did not fall down before a sound. They had to shout while the walls were still standing up. I know you look at your enemy every day. I know you read about your enemy all day, every day. But God said, even while you see your enemy, and even while the walls are still standing, I want you to release a sound. It was the bones. It was all about the bones in Ezekiel. God took God, God took Ezekiel. God took Ezekiel to the valley of dry bones. He said, Ezekiel, can these bones live? He said, can these bones live? Oh, but Ezekiel said, I don't know. Then he, God said, I need you to release a sound over these bones. I want you to begin to prophesy, to begin to speak life. Even though there is death, begin to speak life over your marriage. Oh, begin to speak life over your finances. I know the account level is zero in a negative 22 but God said you've got to open up your mouth and you've got to begin to prophesy over your finances because once you release the sound there shall be manifestation there shall be victory oh come on somebody and once you begin to speak about it 
once you begin to speak well of your negative situation, that negative situation, oh, come on, there shall be life. There shall be breakthrough. There shall be deliverance. In the name of Jesus, something is happening in here. In the name of Jesus. Come on now. You didn't get the Holy Ghost first, but in the Word of God, in the book of Acts, it said first there was a sound. Said there was a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and there were all tongues are to begin to set upon the people because of the sound. Oh, we are entering into the month of autumn, and we are entering into the time where the winds are about to blow. The winds are refreshing them. The winds, oh, oh my God, a breakthrough. The winds of healing. I said the winds of the Holy Ghost are about to blow in this house. I dare you to get up, begin to get your shofar, and begin to release a sound. I said release a sound. The third level of praise has to do with a shout. Ah, the orders came. It said, when you shout, the wall's gonna come down. You see, we got a quiet praise. There's a quiet praise in this house. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! But God said, I'm looking for a shout. Oh, I'm looking for a shout. That's the highest level. Come on, release your shout. One more shout. When an opera singer, there are some opera singers, they can hear the note. <laughs> Jesus. They can hear the note so high that that note begins to break glass. Some of you are about to go past the glass ceiling that's over your life. Your family say you can't do it. Somebody said it couldn't be done by you. Come on now. Somebody said you was gonna be fat all your life. Somebody said you gonna be broke all your life. Somebody said you were gonna be depressed all your life. But the devil is a liar because this next sound is about to shatter. It's about to shatter the stronghold of the enemy in your life. Release a sound!
Come on, lift your hands up. Hallelujah, baby, vegetables. Abba, vegetables. Yeah, baby. Keep that sound. Ba 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 she. Woo. Ba ba she. Minister Pope, I want you to come up and sing prophetically to that sound. Give up, Mike. Keep that sound, minstrels. Keep that sound. Sing what the Lord has put in your belly. of a battle day in and day out if you've been in the midst of a battle and your knees are weak God said he bringing back strength to your knees so you can begin to pray again and he's going to put a fire down in your belly that you will be able to cry out to him there will be a sound release and that sound is going to shatter the attack of the enemy on your life. I'm going to ask that everyone would come down to the altar that needs some more fire in the arsenal. Come on, come on, just come up for prayer. Hallelujah. 